everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm Jen at Ketosis Mom. Today is my week 26 taking Zepbound medication from Eli Lilly. I will be showing that week 26 injection as well as going over my week 25 results with all of you. We will as always talk about GLP ones in the news and today's main topic is going to be through hair training and hair strengthening processes that I utilize to try to reduce hair loss during taking these medications. I know that this has been coming up a lot in the forums and people really want to know what it is they can do and how they can try to mitigate this. While I have not experienced it full force like other people have, I also tend to think that it might be because of my long process that I do with my hair and I've been doing for years. So I will go over that with everybody and the hair training process that I use. Let's go ahead and get started. Today we are sponsored by Armoire and one thing that I really love and I'm going to show you all a lot of different videos about Armoire and how I've been utilizing this rental clothing case. For me personally with my weight constantly changing, I do not want to buy new clothes. And so this case for me allows me to not only try different and new sizes, sizing down as I continue to lose weight, but it also allows me to try new and different brands so that I can see what their sizing is like as well. My husband especially loves my armor bag because he does not have to do any of the laundry. They, in fact, are dry cleaning everything when you send it back to them. I can keep things that I like and purchase them at a discounted price, or I can even hold on to it and keep it throughout my next case and then send it back whenever I'm ready. I've been getting about two cases a month and sometimes I will hold things from the first case over into the second. I also do not have to ship it back to them until I have fully received my new case so that I'm never without clothes. So as far as having decreased in laundry, having decreased in size and needing to try new sizes with it out costing me a fortune and also adding even more sizes to my closet, this has been the perfect opportunity for me to work with a brand and be able to test out new things as I lose weight. They are giving my entire audience 50% off of their first case using the code living large and Lily. You can additionally get two free bonus items within those two cases that you get of your 50% off with them. I do think that it is for sure worth it. If you have events coming up, such as weddings or big school events or company parties or even just the holidays and you want additional options for your family photos coming up. I think that this is a great option for people as they're changing sizes specifically. And I thought that it would be a great partner as well as discount for everybody here today as well. Okay, this next section I'm going to be talking about is at the request of multiple people. And I also understand that multiple people are not going to be interested in it. So make sure that you look at the timestamp down, down below if you'd like to go ahead and skip ahead. So I'm going to talk about what I call hair training. Um, other people might call it something completely different. But my hair is a hot mess today. This is what my hair looks like naturally when it just dries. Okay. I did not do anything to it. It basically was wet and I went like this and I went to sleep. Okay. <laughs> um, and one thing that I really am not fond of, let me put it that way. I'm not going to say that I hate it or that I don't like it, but I'm going to say I'm not fond of it. I don't like watching all these hair videos from people who don't have hair, like they're a bald man uh, or the man who shaves his head or watching hair videos from someone who has 100% styled their hair um, and it looks like they style their hair every single day and they claim that they're just letting their hair be natural or they claim that they're not doing anything to their hair other than brushing it. And if that is the case, and you have that type of hair where you don't have to do anything to it and it doesn't look like this and it looks perfect and like frames your face and looks smooth, then good for you. <laughs> 
that's obviously not me. And I also have had to work just to get my hair to grow. Now my hair typically looks a lot longer than this. It's obviously not going to look long today because it's, as you can see, very like waved up. Um, my hair at one point was all the way up to here. At another down in Florida, it was all the way down to the top of my booty. I have since cut it since then. And then now I'm just leaving it alone all over again. I'm going to go through what I call um, pre, during, post, and in between. Okay. And the products that I'm going to show you are definitely not the exact products that you have to buy or that you necessarily even need to buy because I feel like everyone kind of knows what type of shampoo or what brand of shampoo really works best for them and makes their scalp feel clean. I'm not talking about your hair feeling clean. I'm talking about your scalp feeling clean. Um, and that might differ for different people. What I'm going to show you is what I use. And then also there's some kind of surprise products in here that I didn't realize like, oh yeah, I, I actually do use that all the time. Um, the first thing I'm going to cover is before washing. So this is like right before you're getting into a shower. Um, one thing that I think a lot of people don't really realize is that you lose moisture in your hair constantly and you can lose mo moisture the most to the very ends of your hair that are down here. I call this like the bottom of your bucket. And if you've not sealed the ends of the bottom of your bucket, then the water and the moisture is going to come out. I say water just because that's it's really not good to have actual water within the strands of your hair. That's kind of what you're trying to avoid because the more water you have in like that kind of, the, I call it the holes in the strands of your hair, then the more it's going to break and then the more damaged the, the ends of your hair are gonna be. So a lot of people will use different oils and you guys can tell I use these. I've got like my own hair stuck in them. I have covered how, ma how much I use this for. I mean, you guys can probably see I don't even know that I can. Let's see. It's somewhere like down here, I believe. I use this the most for my skin, but you can also use this for your hair. And I have started using it on my hair. This one is the one that I love the way that it smells. I bought, I buy this in bulk. Anytime it's on sale, I will stock up on it. Um, this is the extra strength coconut miracle oil. These are oils that are not like I'm going to leave them in my hair. These are the oils that I put on my hair before I get my hair wet so that I'm trying to minimize the damage of the water on the ends of my hair. So I'm only putting oil basically from where you guys see this little curve right here from here down on my hair. That I will do maybe every other week as far as putting oil from here down. Typically, I will put oil every single time I wash my hair from here down. And that's really just trying to minimize additional breakage of your hair so that it can't continue to grow. Uh, a lot of people are having hair loss when it comes to zet bound. They're also reporting out that their hair is becoming like brittle and it's breaking off. If that's you, then you want to make sure that you are putting the hair oil on your hair, letting it sit. And then when you go wash your hair, depending on how your scalp is feeling and how dirty your scalp is, you're going to either want to have a scalp scrub that you're putting just on your scalp and scrubbing. And this stuff, it smells amazing. This is a botanical garden scent. Oh yeah, it smells good. You guys can tell I use this. I show products that I, ooh, I'm spilling. I show products I actually use. I'm not gonna show you guys products that I don't use, okay? Um, I, I hate when people do that and they're trying to just say, oh, hey, you should go buy this. I, I wanna show you guys stuff that I actually use and that I actually buy and that I buy on repeat because otherwise, why would you guys listen to anything I ever have to say, right? Um, you're gonna use that on your scalp. And if you don't really have like a super, um, you know, like you don't have dandruff, you don't have dry skin, you don't have a lot of oil on your scalp, 
you don't have, you know, you've not been out doing yard work and you're not super, super dirty, then I use the Olaplex. So Olaplex are my steps in the shower. I use the 4C, the Bond Maintenance Clarifying Shampoo, and then I follow that up with the number five, the Bond Maintenance Conditioner. Now, the shampoo only goes on my actual scalp and then the extra kind of suds from the scalp kind of get pulled down through my ends. And if you recall, my ends are going to be covered with oil because I'm trying to keep the water from the shower out of my hair to keep from it continuing to break it, right? So I'm going to have this from here down or either from here down and then I'm, whoop, and then I'm shampooing with this which is just my scalp. Now, this is probably the most important step that I feel like people who are having hair loss need to pay attention to. If you're having a lot of hair loss, this massager that you can use in the shower is going to help not only stimulate your scalp as you're kind of rubbing in the shampoo, but it's also going to help kind of go ahead and get out anything that is already dead so that you don't think all of a sudden like, oh my gosh, I have this huge handful of hair that just fell out suddenly. You want it to kind of go ahead and go a little at a time and not big clumps at a time. And massaging your scalp can help stimulate your scalp. They've also found that red light therapy can help stim stimulate your scalp as well. I do have a smaller red light. I have not started doing it yet, but I might if I start seeing hair loss. I personally, since doing everything that I do, have felt that my hair has gotten thicker even on Zebo. Another thing that you can do, and this can be in between your hair washes, it can also be right before you wash your hair as well. It's really your own personal preference and how like kind of, I would say, I don't want to say greasy, but how oily your scalp typically gets. I have two different ones that I use. Obviously, you can see that I've used this. It's all the way down here. And this one is about half full. This one is the Ordinary Hair Care. This is a multi-peptide hair serum. It's for, it's for hair density. So I use this one in between, like basically every other day on my actual scalp. It does not make my hair um, oily looking. It doesn't really do anything, but it just, I put it on my scalp. I take my fingers or I take my massager and I just kind of massage it all around on my scalp and I'm good to go. I typically will do this one either the night before I'm going to be washing my hair or if I feel like my hair has gotten super dry from being out in the sun or being out in the pool, then I will use this one as well. This one is a rosemary mint scalp and hair strengthening oil. It has biotin and it says it encourages longer, healthier hair. It is basically just a scalp treatment and it is also split in care as well. So you can use this one on the scalp. You can also use it on the ends. It smells absolutely amazing. I've seen this one all over everywhere. I've used it a ton, but it is much, much thicker. And so this is typically my kind of pre the night before I wash treatment on my scalp. Then I would wake up the next day, go ahead and put the oil on, then go get in the shower. Now I rotate my conditioners in the shower. This is the conditioner I typically use. If my ends of my hair, like next time I wash, I will probably do this because I've been in the pool so much lately. Um, next time I will use this one. This is the Moroccan oil. This one is a weightless hydrating mask. So this one is specifically for fine hair because I do. I have very fine hair. I just have a lot of it, right? And so my conditioner, either my Olaplex or my hair mask is going to yet again go from right here, even with my eyes, down. I'm not going to put any conditioner up on my scalp because if you start putting conditioner up on your scalp and it gets on there, it can start clogging those pores. That can start making the hair follicle fall, fall out. That can also make the sebum and the, and the oil production on your scalp kind of speed up. And it can start speeding up the life cycle of your hair where it thinks like, oh, I need to go ahead and fall out. You need to keep your conditioner on your ends. You need to keep your shampoo and your scalp treatments on your scalp. 
This guy right here, I don't care if you get this one, if you get a wood one, I don't care what you guys get. This is one of the most important things, even just sitting, even just now doing this on my head, this can help stimulate the follicle. It can help stimulate growth. It can help basically just try to make it like a little bit stronger. This I absolutely love. You can also use the fascia blasters. If you don't want to buy something new and you have the fascia blasters I've gone over before like that I use on my face, I've used fascia blasters on my face and my scalp before. So I've used this guy on my face, on my chin, and then turned around and went up here and did it on my scalp too. It feels really, really nice. All right, so you have oiled your hair, you've done your scalp treatment, you've washed your hair, you've done your conditioner, and now you're about to step out of the shower. These are probably some of the steps that the majority of people are forgetting to do um, or, or just aren't really sure what to do. Now, I have used this in the past. This is all over everywhere. This is empty right now. This is the K18 Leave-In Molecular Hair Mask. This I would put on just the very ends of my hair. It's supposed to be like a bond repair type thing. I feel like this is an extra. This is an extra step. If you want it, you can get it. Great. It is good. Um, obviously, I've used the whole thing. I have an, another brand new one back there. I think there might still just be a little bitty bit in here. It does have a smell to it. You only have to do this every four shampoos. Every four shampoos is when you would put this on. The most important step is this. This is a 21 essential benefit um, spray. So you're looking at prime, protect, and perfect. My one mishap about this bottle is that I put it in this bottle because it sprays kind of a thinner mist and it goes further around my hair instead of just squirting in one big clump. Um, so you're looking at, I'm going to put up over here, all the different things that this, this one says that it can do. I am a big proponent of let's get one thing instead of four things, right? And so every single time I've washed my hair, I'm going to be using this when I get out of the shower. If I'm doing what you call a hair refresh, where I'm using my, I'll show you what dry shampoo I use. Then I will also spray this on the ends of my hair again, especially and let it dry, especially if I'm going to be styling my hair again, because this is going to help protect my hair from that styling. The ends of your hair that I told you are the bottom of your bucket, right? It's where you're going to lose moisture the most, basically. I feel like people are, are going to want different things depending on their hair. You're either going to want a hair oil, like the Olaplex number no. 7 bonding oil, which you guys can see I use this because it only takes like three little drops of this. And that's how much I, myself and my children have used. You're going to want a hyaluronic acid serum. So this one is a replumping, hydrating leave-in serum for dehydrated hair. This one is just drugstore. Or you can literally just use hyaluronic acid. So this I get from Amazon. Um, this one is just a, it says it's a facial serum, but it is pure hyaluronic acid. And the whole point of hyaluronic acid is for it to help keep moisture in and not lose that moisture, right? Uh, the Ordinary used to have a pure hyaluronic acid and now they like mix it with all kinds of different things and it's not just hyaluronic acid. So this is the one that I get now. It has a dropper in here. Yes, you can use it on your skin as well. So it's one of those products that you can use on multiple different things. Um, but I use this one specifically for the ends of my hair. And it really just depends on how the ends of my hair are looking on which one of these products I'm gonna use. Because this one is typically what I use right when I get out of the shower, uh, just to kind of seal in the ends. I'm like, okay, I got my oil ends, I'm not losing my moisture. And then throughout the week, I'm using one of these two based on what I'm doing, which they're both hyaluronic acid. Um, this one, the Replumping Leave-In, it's a hyaluron and pump. Um, I mean, if you look through here, it is 2% hyaluronic care complex. And then let's see, does this one say what percentage it is? I will have to look up and see what percentage this is. But both of these, one's in a spray bottle, one's a serum. It's really just kind of your own preference. Some people will say, I can't ever put an oil on my hair. It would weigh my hair down. My hair would look greasy. 
This is the only oil that I've ever been able to use on my hair that it did not make my hair look greasy on the ends. Um, and so this or these two are what I use on the ends of my hair. And I do that all week long, all week long. So I typically don't wash my hair for every three to four days. I try to even get to like six days if I can, um, because I'm trying to really just continue to stimulate my scalp continue to treat my scalp every other day, trying to massage that in. The ends might start looking drier. The ends, the scalp might start looking a little more oily. I will then take my hairbrush and you guys are going to know that this is my hairbrush because you're going to see all my hair in it. I will then take my hairbrush. This is a, a nylon and boar bristle brush. I will kind of pull all of that out so that that oil is getting off of my scalp. I'm not trying to pull the, the oil from my scalp down into my hair necessarily. That is typically what happens. But I'm basically just trying to get any debris or anything just sitting on my scalp off of my scalp. And you're going to want to do that every single night. If you leave anything sitting on your scalp, any type of buildup on your scalp, it can start clogging the follicle pores. That can start making your hair fall out. And so you can even just get, I have some longer, like really thin, I use my mom, I think when I was growing up in the eighties, you know, she used it to tease her hair with those little thin boar bristle brushes. If I use that and honestly, that or this, honestly, those can really get in there really well. And you're basically just trying to kind of scrape all along your scalp, get everything off of your scalp so that it feels like there's not stuff on it. And I know that some people are gonna say, I don't ever feel like there's anything on my scalp. There is. I'm telling you, there's dead skin, there's oil, there's dirt, there's things from your environment, there's things you might not even know about, there's like little skin bugs, whatever there happens to be. Get that off your scalp on a nightly basis and then make sure that you're treating your scalp depending on kind of how your hair is with either the rosemary mint oil or the ordinary density kind of scalp treatments or whatever scalp treatment you find that you like. You can even use hyaluronic acid on your scalp as well because it's just basically going to help maintain the correct amount of moisture that needs to be there. Also in between kind of doing my hair, so doing the oil on the ends, keeping everything off, then once my hair really starts getting like what I would say almost to the point where I need a shower. This is the air wash that I use. I used to use the Living Proof um, dry shampoo. And I did that because I did like a little experiment to see which one worked the best. You can find that video on YouTube if you'd like to see. I basically just put like little dots of this oil right? Because it mimics our own hair oil to, and then spray different types of, and different brands of dry, um, dry shampoo on there to see which one worked the best. And the Living Proof worked the best. However, since this has come out, this is fairly new, the K18 Air Wash Dry Shampoo Shampooing Second, this is, goes on wet. The reason that I like this one is because if I'm just wearing my hair scrunchy, is what I call it, scrunchy like this, then I can re-wet my scalp, get a clean scalp going, re-scrunch everything and let it air dry. And I've used minimal heat and caused minimal damage to my hair or my scalp. Uh, I personally just always like doing the minimal to my hair to try to protect it. Um, I am a huge, huge proponent of the heatless curlers. Most of the time when you guys see me on here and you see my hair looking like this, I have just taken my naturally kind of like wavy, scrunchy looking hair and I have wrapped it in one of these dry heatless curlers at night and then it comes out and it stays in that shape because I gave my hair a shape to follow, right? I just have to get my hair a little bit damp. I can't do it dry because if I did this with this dry hair, it's just gonna come out still looking like this. I have to dampen mine a little bit. And so when I do have to dampen it, you guys are gonna think that this is absolutely crazy. Yes, I can go back and use this, right? However, this to me is like a heat protectant and it, it 
it's more high end is I guess what I would say. This is the one that I spend more money on, right? And so I go over and I get a lot of my kids products out. If we're going to be or we have been out in the sun, I will use this Fairy Tales Cocoa Cabana After Sun Spray. This is a banana leaf, coconut oil, and aloe just to replenish moisture and shine. It also smells amazing. I also absolutely love the Sun Bomb 3-in-1, especially during the summer. Also, coconut oil, banana pulp, peel, and sunflower seed oil. So these are like my summer ones. And then this one that is the Rosemary Repel Conditioning Spray. Uh, I actually like this all year round. And the reason I like this is, yes, I have two children. Yes, I go places that there can be lice. This can help repel lice from ever wanting to come in your hair. And so I have absolutely no problem spraying this all over my, <laughs> all over my head before I even leave the home. And so anytime I'm needing to just kind of dampen my hair, I always want to use something that's also going to be conditioning or protecting my hair at the same time. I am multiple sizes of these heatless curlers. I have, this is the one that I use the most. I also use the ones from Kitsch. They're a little kind of more bendable, obviously. And then I also have ones that just kind of fit in different sections. My children use these as well. I also have a Dyson um, for a blow dryer, a curler, a like styling brush, basically. And I use that maybe three times a month ever uh, just because I really like to try to minimize heat damage or any type of styling product, you know, like heat products, uh, curlers, straighteners, things like that, that I'm doing on my hair. Now, typically I would not just have left my hair like this. The reason I left my hair like this is because I feel like you should see what my hair looks like on its own without me really doing anything to it. And what is interesting about this is I don't want to like perfectly style my hair and say, oh, you could have hair like this too if you just did these things. I feel like that's, a, that's um, misleading for people. I want you guys to see like my hair is not perfect, but I've been on Zetbound for 25 weeks and my hair is getting thicker. Um, a lot thicker, actually. Like when I feel up here on my scalp, I am not missing hair in any of these spots. I'm not saying that that could not change as I continue to titrate up. However, I feel like I'm trying to go ahead and mitigate a lot of the hair loss potential by using a lot of these different products. And I understand this is a lot of product. I do. I also want to kind of preface this with these are not like the very first things that I've used. I have been doing hair, what I call hair training since 2017 because I started losing hair after my first child that I had. So after my first child, all of a sudden I had all this hair loss. I cut all my hair off. I didn't really, I was like angry about it. And then I started trial and erroring different products over the years. And these have been my tried and true favorites that I feel like they work. They're worth the money. I buy them again. A lot of people will say, oh, hey, if you use Olaplex, you should just use the whole Olaplex line. There are Olaplex products that I think are crap. To be honest, like I've used all of them. You can ask my husband because of so how much stuff we have back there. And I just don't feel that they're worth the money. So I'm not going to lead you guys down the wrong path here. Another thing that I've gone over, of course, is all of the different collagen supplements. And a lot of people are just wanting to know, like, what can I take? Like, what kind of supplements can I take to try to mitigate this? And I'm going to tell you guys, I have multiple different kinds of collagen supplements. I have the primal collagen. I have the super young. I have the sports research collagen peptides. And these are also all things that I would mix in with um, my coffee as well, or, or a, a smoothie or just drink with some water just to give it some flavor. However, I am still kind of up in the air on whether or not I really believe that collagen that we ingest that is not collagen that our body is making on its own is really even being utilized. That's my own personal opinion. 
Um, and that kind of spears back from a lot of like my keto days where everybody's like, oh no, collagen's not gonna do you any good. You're just gonna, your kidneys are gonna filter it out. It's just not gonna be anything. Don't bother with that. Um, I know that collagen has obviously come a long way since then. There's different types of collagen as well. I feel like the belief behind collagen is kind of like to each their own. One thing I have started that I, that does make sense to me though, is taking this supplement because I feel like if you're giving your body the minerals and vitamins that it needs in order to produce or help the production of collagen, that in my mind makes a little more sense. And so while I, yes, am, I'm still drinking the collagen, I'm also taking something that supports my own body's production of collagen. That I feel like I personally, like with my, my thought process can get a little bit more behind. Uh, and so that's something that I've started. I can't tell you if it's like for sure working or not. It's very new. I've been taking it. I just started this month just to see how it goes, especially since I've been talking to everybody about like my chin that's like hanging down here now. Um, so let's just see. And I will keep you guys updated on how that goes too. I love kind of seeing what's going on. I love seeing what's in the news myself, but I really like sharing it with all of you because I feel like this is what really helps the community spark different conversations. If you've seen something in the news that I don't cover, I would love for you to comment it down below so that the rest of us can chit chat about it and look into it and see what, what we see. I did have in the news about the vials being released that I covered last week with everyone. In the United States, Eli Lilly is only going to be releasing, per the FDA's agreement, the 2.5 milligram and the 5 milligram. There is reasoning behind this, and I know that some of our viewers from other countries are talking about how they are taking a larger vial, such as the 15 milligram, and then divvying that out into multiple different injections. The FDA does not want that done in the United States, therefore our vials are single-use vials and so even if you have the five milligram they do not want americans trying to divide the five milligram into two separate 2.5 milligrams this is not necessarily just a money thing that most people in the forums are claiming it to be uh, there is a safety a very large safety uh purity sterility over injecting everything like that that goes hand in hand with this there is really not a good way for the average American who has no pharmaceutical, no manufacturing, no medical experience to know how to split a two, a five milligram vial in exactly two and a half and two and a half uh, so that their two injections that they would be taking would be equal. What they don't want to happen is for one injection to be a four milligram and then the next injection to only be a one milligram and you are basically getting too much in one injection and then not enough in another. Uh, I understand that some people do have a little more experience. There's a lot of people out there that are buying research peptides on their own and mixing up their own concoctions of things to take. Uh, there, of course, is the FDA looking into these research peptides and how they're getting into the country, how they're being sold. I myself have seen ads on Facebook in regards to purchasing an entire box of research peptides. Uh, I am not planning on doing that in any way, shape, or form, just in case you guys were wondering. If you are, I will honestly say I applaud your... Um, how should I say this? Your confidence in yourself. <laughs> That's what I'll say. I applaud your confidence in yourself because I am someone who spills it out in the front of my shirt every single time and I would contaminate the heck out of that. And with this being a drug that is specifically affecting so many organs within my body, including my brain, this is not something that I really play around with personally, and that is my own choice. What I would love to know down in the comments below is I would love to know from all the viewers a couple of things today. Number one, what dosage are you currently on? Number two, how long have you been on your current dosage? 
And number three, are you taking a compound, a brand name drug, or are you mixing your own peptides? And if you're not comfortable with saying that, that's perfectly fine as well. This is just kind of an open community for everybody to kind of chat and talk, right? Uh, I would also love to hear in the comments down below which level or which titration dosage in milligrams was your best weight loss and your best feeling overall within yourself, like you felt the best during your entire progress so far. So for me personally, I have felt the best on 2.5. I've also lost the most on the 2.5. I'm currently on five milligrams and I will cover later on when I do my injection of my week 26, what is going on with me staying on that five or titrating up. So stay tuned. Thing that's happening this week, and this is not necessarily what I would say is in the news, but it is all over every forum that you go to. It does not matter which platform you're on. If you are looking at it, you are seeing people panicking about these vials. They are panicked that the shortage list is going to be removing terzepatide from the FDA shortage list. They have been receiving letters from their compounder letting them know that they will no longer be able to compound, that they are receiving letters from the FDA, that they need to cease and desist. Yes, they are sending out cease and desist letters in enlightenment of knowing that they have just approved Eli Lilly to release these vials to support their supply. There are multiple different signature petitions going around. There are petitions for compounding to still be allowed of both terzepatide and semaglutide that there's quite a few signatures on that they're trying to get to send to the FDA and also to their government representatives. There are additionally petitions going around for signing it saying that the shortage is not over, that they have not been able to obtain either Mount Jaro or Zetbound anywhere within a 30 mile radius of where they are living. Um, there are multiple different petitions that, that people are, are putting out there to be signed. They are asking like, hey, we wanna stop this. We need to keep our compounds. Additionally, in this panic, there is a ton of people who are asking everyone what compounding company allows you to buy in bulk. There are a lot of people that are buying up to nine weeks in advance or they're buying entire batches from their compounder. Uh, a while back, I had someone local to me ask me had I looked into one of the local compounding companies that's just right across the river from where I am. I did in fact have a chat with them they do put B12 in their compounds. And so that was not something that I could progress further with. They were great. They were offering up whatever paperwork it was that I was wanting. They were offering up there where they get their, uh, the C of A for their terzepatide. They were extremely friendly and they also sell in batches of 250. However, they are selling those batches of 250 to medical professionals is what they prefer to do. So a lot of medical med spas, medical professionals that are also trying to make sure that they're stocking it up enough for their offices as well. So you have not only patients that are buying direct stocking up, but you also have all of these nurses and medical professionals trying to stock up as well, just in case these cease and desist letters are in fact going to affect them and their medical practice when it comes to terzepatide. I am also seeing multiple people on forums that are saying that their office and their compounder is saying that they do not care what comes out uh, or if terzepatide is removed from the shortage list because it does not affect their compounding, that they have been compounding for years, all other types of drugs, and they do not plan on stopping the compound of this drug because their formula is different. So when you see that places are adding the B12 and the B6 um, niacinamide into their specific concoctions of what they're sending out, uh, they are claiming that they have a different formulation, therefore they are trying to justify why they are compounding. To me, that would be like me adding a sprinkle of salt to a Budweiser and then slapping a label on it that says it's selling as Jen's beer. 
So um, I don't really know how the FDA is going to look upon that as well as how Eli Lilly's legal team will approach that, but I cannot wait to see it all unfold. I'm actually excited for it. I can't wait to share all of that news with you <laughs> as it hits. One thing I do want to mention to everybody is that in previous weeks, I do not think that I brought this up. And so I'm going to bring it up now. If you are taking a compound and they are adding a B12 to your compound, you might want to reach out to your compounder and ask them how much of the B12 is realistically in each one of your vials. The reason I ask for this is that there are a lot of people that are reporting to hospitals with different types of organ failure, organ issues, lots of issues. You can have a lot of things go on when you have too much B12 in your system. Even if you are B12 deficient like I am, if you start taking an injection of B12 on a weekly basis where you, are, you have a potential to take too much of the B12 within one injection, there can be a lot of different complications when it comes to that specifically. So for me personally, I don't think I would ever pick a compound with B12. For one, I'm allergic to B12 in a synthetic uh, additive type form. I can only have B12 within whole foods. However, even if I wasn't, I don't think that I would pick a compound that is also compounded with B12 for that specific reason. I'm not really interested in winding up in the hospital with issues and complications with B12. I will remind everybody that I do have a partnership with Emerge. They do offer compounds. They will text you back and forth. It is an actual medical team that does this via three different pharmacies. I have the blog post up on those three different pharmacies. It will be up to date as of whatever day you are watching this, even if it is in the future. It will have the up-to-date FDA audits of those facilities, the up-to-date state licensure, and whether or not they are a sterile compounding facility or not that they are utilizing. They do, however, send every one vial every 28 days. So this is not something that you would be able to stock up on per se. But if you are nervous about your compound potentially going somewhere, you're paying out of pocket, and you might be pulling from multiple different places. Emerge is still offering the $50 off for all of my audience members. That's $25 off your first two shipments from them. And their pricing is also available on their website as well as my blog post as well. I do not use compounds. This is a referral that they are allowing you all to use. I am letting all of that just sit there for future use potentially. If for some reason I was not able to get Zep bound, if for some reason I was not able to obtain my medicine in the dosage that I need, then I would be able to use the funds within that if I were to ever move and do a compound and emerge via Hallandale Pharmacy for where I live in Kentucky would be where they would be sending from. We've discussed Altimune in the past and Altimune is all over the news right now for a small company that might be acquired. <laughs> Altimune is the company that has the phase three drug. It is called Pemvid, hold on, I'm gonna read it to you guys. It is called Pemvidutide. There we go. Pemvidutide is a GLP-1 medication that is also combined with a medication to prevent muscle loss. They're boasting really nice results in both their, both their phase two and phase three clinical trials. They have about 15.6% overall weight loss in their participants, with only 22% of that being from muscle. So they're looking at a medication that is targeting fat specifically as the patient gets smaller. And so you're looking at larger companies like Novo Nordisk and Eli Lilly swooping in and basically buying this company out. Altimune's drug has also been looked at for the treatment of MASH which is something that both of the companies have been attempting to develop and get approved with the FDA. They also have things in their pipeline that they may or may not be submitting for. And I do look for either Novo Nordisk or Eli Lilly to, and one of them to sweep in and buy up Altimune just because that would be an additional thing that they can add to their pipeline that would be over the other. So you have to remember that this battle of the titans between Novo Nordisk and Eli Lilly has been going on for quite a while uh, of who can kind of outdo the other when it comes to their drugs. 
Last week I did talk a little bit about chia seeds and the health benefits behind chia seeds. And while there are a lot of health benefits behind chia seeds, I do want you to also realize that there may be some negatives to it. There has been an article released of diabetic patients who have been on chia seeds in their diet that it is dropping their blood sugar too low. You have, and this was on patients who were on insulin, not patients who were already on Mount Jaro or Ozempic, whichever one you take. Um, the chia seeds are slowing down digestion. They are also lowering your overall blood sugar. And on these medications, it can drop your blood sugar too low. It is also having an effect with blood pressure medicine where it can decrease your blood pressure to where your blood pressure is also too low. It additionally is an antiplatelet chia seeds are. So you need to watch taking this with any type of cardiovascular medication as well. So always talk to your medical professional and also look into it yourself if you are also on any type of blood pressure or cardiovascular medicine, as well as any medicine for diabetes. Typically every week I talk about how high Eli Lilly's stock is going and while it is still way up there and doing really well, it did have a little bit of a drop and a dip due to the fact that it is releasing $3.3 billion of its own money within a bond in order to acquire Morphic. This acquisition is really just another acquisition in the Eli Lilly pipeline. They are acquiring so many different sites, so many different people, specifically ones that can manufacture. I had a call yesterday myself from one of my former yeah, co-workers that has also worked with my husband in multiple locations as well. And he, in fact, is also going to be working on an Eli Lilly project coming up and asked me, was I available? So I do want to let everybody know that if that were to ever come to apparition and I do sign a contract with them to work for them, uh, these videos will likely have to cease and desist. <laughs> You cannot do videos on your employer. And so if that were to happen, I will let you all know far in advance that that is happening. I'm not really about going back into that type of work. It's extremely stressful and extremely, extremely stressful when you're looking at a greenfield site, which you are building a manufacturing site on. I've done this before in the state of Georgia with a $2 billion facility. It is a huge headache. It ages you. You work a lot of hours. There's a whole lot behind it. There's a whole lot of government regulators all around and you are on your toes 24 seven. I have two kids now. I don't really know that's going to be for me. Plus I kind of like doing these videos and I also don't like people telling me when I can't do something. Anybody else like that? Here's what a lot of you have been waiting for. I am going to show you as we're going through, we're going to go over my week 25 results that I had. And then I will also show you all my week 26 injection. There's a couple of things that I want to talk about with this. As you remember last week, I had taken my Cosentix injection, then I had my Zep bound and I had gained weight. Then I said, it's probably going to take me an additional week, maybe even more to get that off as well. That was still up from my Cosentix injection. If you all recall, Cosentix has made me gain anywhere between five and 10 pounds every single month, regardless of how I eat, regardless of how I exercise. And I have done everything from keto to low carb to carnivore and even tried vegan. Yeah. So... For me, I have discussed with both the Weight Watchers Clinic physician as well as my local endocrinologist the trend over the last month and how I really have not had a net loss in the past two months where I'm basically teetering back and forth from this 5 to 10 pounds gained from Cosentix, getting the 5 to 10 pounds back off. For me, the five milligram will likely be what is going to be my maintenance dose down the road as coinciding me taking Cosentix. So as long as I'm on Cosentix, I will have to take something to combat the weight gain with it. The five milligrams of terzepatide long-term will likely be where that falls after I get the weight off that I have gained for the past two years on Cosentix. So for me personally, I have gone ahead and agreed with both Weight Watchers Clinic and my local endocrinologist that we will move up to the 7.5 milligrams. Yes, 
two or three videos back, I put a giant foot in my mouth and said, I'm going to stay on five milligrams for the next, I don't know, through next summer. Um, there's a lot of different people who have different reactions to the different dosages. So far, I have done my best on the 2.5 milligram. I maybe should have even stayed on the 2.5 milligram a little bit longer. I do not have any type of food noise whatsoever. I was also kind of came into this and I was already eating properly anyway, and I was not eating enough. So now I have to make myself eat, I have to force myself to eat, and I'm typically forcing myself to eat protein. I additionally got back my Viome results, and I'm gonna go over my Viome results with you all next week. It was extremely interesting, but the reason I'm waiting until next week to, to go over it with you is because I want to do a full comparison of the Viome results versus the last five stranded results that I did that was also a DNA test. Stay tuned for that for next week. We will go over the Viome results and dig into them a lot. Uh, I am removing some things from what I'm eating based off of the Viome results, so we'll see how that goes as well. Um, for my week 25, I did lose 1.6 pounds. So I did lose, however, I am still at the same weight that I was before I took the Cosentix. So I basically just turned around and lost the weight from Cosentix, and now I have an additional, I think, week to week and a half before I have to take the Cosentix again. So at this point, the 7.5 milligram has been called in. Uh, my local endocrinologist called it into the wrong place and because I have gone back and forth with them a few times and they still can't seem to get it where it needs to go, I just asked my Weight Watchers Clinic doctor to send it where I know they can get it and I'm waiting on them to send me a message that it's, it's there and it's available. I also don't think that my insurance will allow me to fill it until the 20th of this month. I will have to probably call them and ask them since it is a dosage change if they'll go ahead and override that so that it can be filled. But today I went ahead and took a five milligram because that's what I have on hand. So I will have this week of my five milligram injection What's a little bit different about this is because it's my last one on the five milligram, I wanted to try something that I'm seeing on all of the forum forums and all of like a lot of people are doing it and saying that it is working and it's working better. So typically when you look at the chart of where you're supposed to inject this injection per the clinical trials and per the manufacturing instructions, you're looking at your thighs behind your arms, kind of the fatty area of your arm, as well as out, outside two inches around your abdominal area. The main thing that you're looking for is that you don't want to ever inject directly into a muscle. You're wanting to direct into some fatty tissue. So there's a lot of people who are injecting into their sides. I did this last week on my left side. And so this week I did it on my right side and I even moved out a little bit further. So last week I did it, it was almost kind of straight down this direction in the part of the skin that is kind of hanging over from losing weight. I put it right in there and then today I did it in what I call a nice little love handle right on the side. It's a little sore right now. Um, I would love, I just want to see how it works or if that's going to be a spot for me or not. There is some science behind the rotation of spot, of the spot where you inject it. And there was something posted and I know that this is the mochi like doctor. So let's not like have at her for that, but she does bring up a good valid point on within one of the studies that she's reviewing that there is, and there can be different losses with people and different reactions with people based on their injection site. And it is not the same across the board. And I've been saying that for quite some time. It is extremely individualized. And that is why it's important for you to kind of continue rotating around your arms, your stomach, your thighs, if you wanna try a love handle and see what works best for you as far as both appetite suppression, as far as not being fatigued, as far as not being dehydrated, constipated, diarrhea, stomach pains, anything like that. Um, a lot of people will say that in one area they have a lot of constipation and then another they don't. So it's really important for you to kind of monitor yourself and make notes for yourself so that you can keep up with these things.
What I would love to hear from everybody in this group is what is your favorite injection site? And I would love to see how many different reactions we get. So down in the comments below, put me what you, what you think your best injection site is. And then tell us why you think that it's the best. Is it where you lose the most weight? Is it where you have the most appetite suppression? Is it where it hurts the least? It's where you don't bruise the most. Tell us why as well. That's going to be it for this week. Next week, I can't wait to go over my Biome results with everybody. Remember that you can get a discount on Biome. I will put that down in the caption down below as well if you're interested in doing any of their gut health tests or overall health tests that you can do at home. I am loving being here every week with you guys, which is another reason why I don't know that I would, I would accept any kind of position that someone hands my way unless it's really good. Uh, just because I like being able to be a content creator. This is what I like doing. I've been really busy the past week just because I have a lot of different contract changes and a lot of different terms of service changes that have been coming up and I've been trying to review those to make sure that I'm staying on top of things and doing exactly what it is that I need to be doing to progress further. Uh, Amazon changed their entire program of how they're gonna be doing things, so I'm still in the process of re reviewing all of that. Here are a couple of ways that you can support my creator work. You can follow my Amazon storefront and shop from anything on Amazon with me directly, and I appreciate you guys doing that. It lets Amazon know that you do like the type of content that I'm doing. You can put comments down below. You can like this video. You can also hit the subscribe button as well as the bell. And that lets YouTube know that you really like my content and it helps boost me on YouTube as well. I'm additionally on Instagram on two different Instagrams. So if you are a person who likes to see really cool different products that you might want to grab or things about parenting, then Ketosis Mom on Instagram may be, may be for you. And if you like things like armoire and looking at how different types of clothing fits on people who have curves and are a little bit larger, then Living Large and Lily may be for you. And there is also a Like to Know It account that is attached to Living Large and Lily if you would prefer to shop from there. I can tag anything from anywhere on Like to Know It and Amazon, of course, is Amazon right? So it just depends on what kind of shopping you like to do and what type of content you like to look at as far as which one you would choose to follow. I am on TikTok at both Ketosis Mom and Living Large as Lily as well, but I will be very honest with you all. It's kind of an afterthought and aftermath for me. Um, <laughs> you can additionally, each week I have a sponsor for these YouTube videos. You can go and look at who the sponsor is by clicking the link or using the QR code within the video. That drives traffic so that, that that lets the brands know that I work with, that you all are looking at the offers that they are offering out so that we can get some more sponsors in here as well. I really appreciate you all supporting me. If you would like to support me in any other way, I will put that down in the caption below. I don't like asking people for Venmo and Cash App like some of the other creators, but I have put it up because I've had multiple different people DM me and ask me, could they send me something in this form instead of via a YouTube, whatever it happens to be now, or whatever it happens to be called. But I do appreciate any way or form that you all support my content because that does keep me home and not going and working in pharmaceutical manufacturing again, working probably 7 a.m. until probably 7 a.m. the next day. Uh, <laughs> I'll see you guys next week and let me know down in the comments any other things that you guys would like to go over. Bye y'all.